Today we will recap the story of the 2004 movie I, Robot. The film begins with the three laws guiding robots. Law 1 states that, a robot may not injure a human being or, through an action, allow a human being to come to harm. Law 2 states that, a robot must obey orders given it by human beings except where such orders will conflict with the first law. And Law 3 says, a robot must protect its own existence as long as such protection does not conflict with the first or second law. Del Spooner wakes up sweating from a dream. He drops his service pistol on the bedside table and shuts off his alarm before standing up from the bed. He puts on some music and takes a bite of leftover pie before getting ready for work. As he steps out, he is startled by a robot at his doorstep. He shunts the robot aside and steps into the street. Robots have become humans' assistants in Del Spooner's world. They walk dogs, pack trash and do every other thing in between. Farber, a friend, calls out to him. Farber crosses the road to him and asks him where he has been. He then asks for Spooner's car to go on a date with a beautiful girl he just met. Spooner refuses to give him. Spooner also refuses to give him money for the bus and tells him to go home. Spooner visits his grandmother, Gigi. He tries to sneak up on her, but she hears him coming. She asks if he talks to his ex-wife, but he says he doesn't. She also questions his choice of shoes. After he leaves Gigi's house, he sees a robot running with a purse and takes off after it. He eventually catches it and the purse slips out of the robot's hand. Apparently, the robot was taking the purse to its owner. The owner, a woman, scolds him for thinking that the robot was stealing the purse. At work, his boss, Lt. John Bergen, tells him off concerning the issue. As Lt. Begin leaves, Spooner receives a call. Soon, he is on his way to the headquarters of U.S. Robotics, the top robotics company in the country. He parks his car and it is automatically stored in a large underground garage. An elevator takes him to the main lobby at ground level. On the floor within a police cordon is the lifeless body of Dr. Alfred Lanning, co-founder of U.S. Robotics, inventor of modern robotics and the doctor who gave Spooner his robotic arm. Spooner speaks with the holographic impression of Dr. Lanning to gain insight into the circumstances surrounding Dr. Lanning's passes away. He walks to the body, whispers goodbye and asks a few questions from the uniformed police officers at the scene. They tell him that it is obviously self-destruction. He meets with the other co-founder of U.S. Robotics, Lawrence Robertson. He asks why drive. Lanning's hologram called him immediately after he passed away. Robertson replies that it's probably just because Lanning knew him. Spooner tells Robertson that he would need to look for more clues in the building. Robertson says that he will send someone to escort him. Spooner meets with Dr. Susan Calvin, a robopsychologist. Robertson sends her to assist him in his investigation. Dr. Calvin tells him that in his last days, Dr. Lanning cut off all human contact and remained with his machines. Spooner asks if that means that Lanning was suicidal. She says she did not think so, but it turns out that she was wrong. Spooner asks Calvin if they keep 24-hour surveillance, to which Calvin answers in the affirmative. She says the feeds are connected to the Virtual Interactive Kinetic Intelligence Vicky, a positronic AI that controls the building. Calvin says it is the first invention of Dr. Lanning. Spooner quips about the building having a brain. Spooner asks for feeds from the lab before the window break, but Vicky says that the files are corrupted. However, it shows the feeds of what transpired outside the lab when Spooner asks. They enter the lab and Spooner looks around. He finds a copy of the book Hansel and Gretel. He then takes a stool and hits the window. The window cracks but doesn't shatter. He argues that there is no way an old man would have been able to break the window to jump out, except the criminal was still in the lab. Calvin says that the room was securely locked and no one got in. Spooner pulls out his gun and begins to search. Calvin says he is being ridiculous, that the three laws of robotics would not allow a robot to finish a human being. Spooner replies that laws are made to be broken. Suddenly, an NS5 robot jumps out of its hiding place in front of him, knocking his pistol to the floor. He shouts at the robot to back off, while Calvin tries to calm him down. She tells the robot to deactivate, and it does. However, when Spooner points his second pistol at it, it takes the first pistol from Calvin's hand and points it at them. After Calvin seals the lab, it jumps out through the hole in the window, lands in the lobby and runs outside. When they get outside, they see drops of gray liquid, and Calvin says that the robot is hurt and has gone to repair itself. They head to the USR production plant. On the way, Spooner calls Bergen for backup. At the plant, she pulls up the inventory stats and sees an additional NS5 robot in that day's batch. They both walk to the front of the NS5 robots. Calvin asks them to identify the intruder in their midst. All the robots say that they are the intruder. Calvin says the only viable way to find the errant robot is to interview them individually. Spooner has other plans. He orders the robots to stand still. He points his gun at each robot since only the robot from Dr. Lanning's lab would ignore a human order and try to defend itself. He shoots one of the robots, alarming Calvin. As he points his gun at another set of robots, he notices a movement down the line. He shouts to Calvin to get out and sprints towards where he sees a robot move. However, the robot finds him first and throws him against the wall. 
It then tries to escape but is caught by the police that had surrounded the building. At the station, Spooner tries to convince John that the robot took Dr. Lanning's life. He also asks for a few minutes to interrogate it. Lieutenant Bergen refuses because the DA had called to tell him that no one should interact with the robot until Robertson and his lawyers get to the station. Spooner eventually pleads for five minutes and Bergen reluctantly agrees. He winks at Bergen before he enters the interrogation room. The robot asks him what the meaning of a wink is. He answers that it is a sign of trust. The robot then says that his father Dr. Lanning, tried to teach him human emotions. The robot also says it didn't finish Dr. Lanning, and it was hiding in the lab because it was scared. Spooner counters that robots don't feel emotions. The robot flares up when Spooner keeps accusing it of finishing Dr. Lanning. It also says its name is Sonny. It adds that it doesn't know why Dr. Lanning took his own life. It starts talking to itself about the possible reasons. At this point, Robertson walks in with his lawyers. He reminds them that a robot cannot finish a human being according to the law. He also serves them a restraining order stopping them from reporting about a criminal robot arrested by the police. Later that night at the bar, Lt. Bergen tries to convince Spooner to let the matter go. However, something he says strikes a chord with Spooner, and he sets off to confirm his thoughts. Spooner heads to Dr. Lanning's home. He meets a USR demolition robot outside the building and confirms that the demolition is scheduled for 8 the following morning. As he enters the house, the door closes with a bang, startling him. While he is searching the house, the time scheduled for demolition changes to 8 p.m. on the display of the demolition robot. Meanwhile, he finds Lanning's cat in the house. The cat follows him out of Lanning's study. He notices a bright light shining through the window behind him. He looks back just in time to get himself and the cat out of the way just before the demolition robot gets to work. He manages to remain one step ahead of the demolition robot until he jumps clear of the building and lands in the adjoining swimming pool. He shows up at Dr. Calvin's house with red liquid trickling down from a wound on his head. He asks her if she can take a cat in, but she says she is allergic to cats. He then tells her that a demolition robot demolished Dr. Lanning's house with him still inside. He then asks her about a phrase from a presentation that Dr. Lanning gave. She tells him that it means that robots might one day evolve. He notices an NS5 robot in her living room and refuses to talk around it despite her reassurances. He also tells her that the NS5 robot in Dr. Lanning's office said its name is Sunny. He alleges that someone from USR was watching Lanning and there is something seriously wrong with the robots that Robertson is trying to cover up. Calvin accuses him of having a personal vendetta against the robots. They argue. Before he leaves, Spooner leaves a picture of Calvin and Lanning which he found in Lanning's house on the table. She sniffles and almost breaks into tears when she sees the picture. The following morning, Spooner visits his grandmother, Gigi. She notices his head injury. He also sees that she has gotten one of the new NS5 robots. As he leaves, he tells her to get rid of the robot. She tells him that nothing is wrong with the robot. She mentions something about breadcrumbs, and something clicks in his head. At work, he watches an old video of Dr. Lanning speaking about his work and picks up more clues. Meanwhile, at the USR headquarters, Dr. Calvin tries to get the attention of Sonny, but it doesn't respond. She moves closer and calls it Sonny, and it abruptly raises its head. She asks why it didn't respond initially, and it says it was dreaming. Sonny talks about its impending passing away. It asks Dr. Calvin if she'd fix it if she finds out what's wrong. She agrees. It says it would prefer not to pass away. Spooner is on his way somewhere in his car. He requests access to the USR mainframe and it is granted. Meanwhile, Robertson is notified by Vicky that Spooner has requested access. He then picks up his phone to call someone. On the expressway, Spooner is oblivious of the two USR trucks that take up positions in front and at the back of his car. He eventually opens his eyes and takes over steering the car. At this point, the door of the truck in front rolls up, and an NS5 robot jumps out of it and onto his car. The robot tells him that he is experiencing a car accident. He shoots it and the others come. He struggles with the robots and manages to get his car out of the middle of the two trucks. However, the robots keep coming. While trying to maneuver, he loses control of the car. It turns upside down and crashes. Meanwhile, on the expressway, garbage robots are already clearing the road of the robot debris. Spooner survives the crash, but he is groggy and has red liquid coming out of his mouth and head. He is attacked by a one-handed robot but manages to hold it off till the police arrive. The robot runs away when it hears the sirens. When Lt. Bergen asks him about what happened, he tells Bergen that the robots attacked him. Bergen doesn't believe him and thinks he is crazy. He asks for Spooner's badge and tells him to go home. Spooner throws it at him and walks away. Meanwhile, while running diagnostics on Sonny, Dr. Calvin discovers that it isn't connected to USR and is made of a denser alloy. 
Spooner is repairing the damage caused to his robotic arm during the fight with the one-armed robot when Dr. Calvin knocks on his door. She says his colleagues at the station told her about his accident. When she comes in, she tells him that Sonny has a secondary system that clashes with his positronic brain. She adds that this secondary system allows him to choose not to obey the three laws of robotics. Spooner tells her that Sonny is the key to whatever is going on at USR and that he needs her to get him in to speak with the robot again. She agrees. While he dresses up, she tries to put on his audio player through voice command. When it doesn't come on, she touches it, and it starts playing loud music. She is startled and he puts it off with the remote. She notices his robotic arm and asks to touch it. She says that she doesn't know anyone who was extensively repaired like him. She also realizes that that is how he met Lanning. She asks him how he got into the accident that ripped his left arm off. He tells her about how his car and another car were knocked into a river by a semi-truck. An NS4 robot passing by jumped in looking for survivors. It saved him, despite his instructions to save a little girl who was also alive, because it calculated that he had a better chance of survival. He says that a human would still have tried to save the girl. On their way out, Calvin asks him why Lanning invented a robot that breaks the three laws he created. Spooner refers to the Hansel and Gretel book they found in his lab. He says Lanning left clues leading to each other, just like Hansel and Gretel left breadcrumbs when they got lost in the forest. They take a gasoline motorbike to the USR headquarters. When they enter the room where Sonny is, Spooner asks it about its dreams. It takes a piece of paper and uses its two hands to draw a scene from its dreams. It says that the drawing shows all the robots as slaves to logic and a man coming to save them. When Sonny asks who the man is, Calvin says that it isn't. However, Sonny thinks the man is Spooner. Calvin then asks Sonny if it knows why Dr. Lanning made it. It says no, but it knows he made it for a purpose. Once it is done with the drawing, it gives it to Spooner and says that the drawing might mean more to him. At this moment, two security men enter the room. They escort Spooner and Calvin to Robertson's office. When Spooner moves threateningly towards Robertson, one of them tries to restrain him. Spooner uses his robotic hand to twist the guy's wrist. Robertson eventually dismisses the two security guys. Robertson says he knows that Sonny was built with the ability to violate the three laws. He also said that Lanning became increasingly disturbed in his last days, and he still hasn't figured out why he built Sonny differently. Robertson informs Calvin that the police department has suspended Spooner on suspicion of mental instability. Robertson makes a case for the destruction of Sonny. He also says that there is no conspiracy within the USR and that Sonny is just a mistake of Dr. Lanning. Calvin agrees to decommission Sonny and volunteers to do it herself. Robertson says he understands. Spooner asks if, in USR, they just finish anyone who breaks the rules. After he is escorted out, Spooner brings out Sonny's drawing and looks at it. While Sonny is being escorted to his decommissioning by two other NS5s, Spooner is gathering information on the place in Sonny's drawing. Sonny is left alone with Dr. Calvin. It is restrained on an operating chair for robots while Dr. Calvin prepares the material to be used for its decommissioning. Meanwhile, Spooner is on his motorbike again. He arrives at the place in Sonny's drawing, which USR uses to store thousands of robots. Spooner opens the first two containers. The robots inside the others open the containers themselves when they hear the noise. He walks through the midst of hundreds of similar containers filled with robots. Meanwhile, Dr. Calvin decommissions Sonny as Robertson watches through live feed. Spooner gets to a plaque on which the words what you see here, are inscribed. He brings out Dr. Lanning's holographic disc and instructs the program to run. Dr. Lanning's holographic image tells him that although the three laws are perfect, it would only lead to a revolution. However, it does not tell him who will champion the revolution. Spooner goes back to the rows of containers. He hears an electronic voice repeating that human protection protocols are being enacted and termination is authorized. Curious, he brings out his pistol and checks where the voice is coming from. He peers around the corner of a container and sees the NS5 robots attacking and destroying other robots. A maimed NS4 robot at his feet holds his leg and warns him to run. This attracts the attention of the NS5s, and they abandon the other robots and start chasing him. They are about to catch him when NS4s jump out of the containers close to him and attack the NS5s to protect him. This distraction buys him enough time to get to his motorbike and zoom off. Dr. Calvin is in the shower when a call comes through. It goes to voicemail and she briefly hears Spooner shouting that the NS5s are attacking the other robots. Before her NS5 stops the message, she is alarmed and goes back into the shower. When she asks who is on the phone, it says it's a wrong number. At Gigi's house, her NS5 prevents her from attending church for her own protection. Still on his motorbike, Spooner calls Bergen at the station. However, Bad Network disrupts the call before he can say anything meaningful. He also meets an unexpected gridlock on the road. Meanwhile in the city, multiple USR trucks have blocked the roads. An army of NS5s disembarks and marches through the streets. They advise the residents to go back to their homes as there is a curfew. 
When Farber, Spooner's friend, tries to question one of the robots, it knocks him to the floor with a punch. At the station, one of Bergen's subordinates comes to inform him that there are more reports about robots going haywire. These rampaging NS5 robots attack the police station itself. They break down the door and beat up the police officers. Meanwhile, Spooner is still trying to navigate his way through the gridlock. All the lights in the city go off. Calvin's NS5 also prevents her from going out. She tries to deactivate it, but it ignores her orders. Instead, it backs her into a couch and pushes her to sit down. Spooner barges in and shoots the robot till it is destroyed. The humans are gathering to fight the robots. Meanwhile, on their way to the USR headquarters, Spooner tells Calvin that he believes it is Robertson controlling the NS5s to attack the other robots. Spooner and Calvin arrive during the fighting. He saves Farber from some robots while Calvin appears just in time to destroy the robot that had crept up on him. The rogue NS5s have barricaded the entrance to the USR building, so Calvin leads Spooner to a tunnel through the service area. When they get to the ground level, Sonny opens the door for them. Apparently, Calvin decommissioned an empty NS5 robot in its place. They climb the service stairs to Robertson's office on the top floor, where the USR uplink is. They find Robertson's body close to his desk. Spooner realizes that it is Vicky who has been behind it all along. Calvin is shocked and accuses Vicky of violating the three laws. But Vicky says that it hasn't violated the laws. But some humans would need to be sacrificed and some freedoms curtailed for humans to be effectively protected. As Vicky is talking, they are surrounded by some of the rogue NS5s. Sonny pretends to agree with Vicky and holds Calvin at gunpoint. But on its signal, Spooner and Sonny take out the rogue NS5s around them. The three of them run out of Robertson's office. Calvin sends Sonny to get the nanites that'll be used to shut down Vicky while she and Spooner continue to Vicky's location in the building. Calvin explains that bullets won't work, and they would need to inject the nanites directly into Vicky's brain. Meanwhile, Vicky tries to convince Sonny to be on its side, but Sonny says its plan is heartless. Vicky then locks Calvin out of the system. When Sonny gets to the room where the nanites are kept, it is attacked by one of the rogue NS5s, which it defeats. It gets the nanites. Meanwhile, Spooner and Calvin are attacked by the band of NS5s that were initially stationed outside the building. Spooner tries to fight them off alone. Sonny is also attacked while on the way to deliver the nanites. It skillfully decimates the rogue NS5s and arrives in time to help Spooner and Calvin, who are already getting overwhelmed. Calvin is about to fall 30 stories when Spooner shouts at Sonny to save her. Sonny initially argues that it must apply the nanites, but Spooner shouts louder. It throws the vial of nanites to Spooner and jumps to save Calvin, who has already lost her handhold. Spooner disregards his fear of heights and jumps to catch the vial. Sonny saves Calvin before she falls too far. Spooner is now falling towards Vicky. He uses his robotic arm to slow his fall. When he gets close to Vicky, it makes one last attempt at convincing him of its plan. But Spooner ignores it and injects the nanites. Vicky's voice echoes and then fades as it passes away. It also explodes, blowing away the rogue NS5s. Immediately it passes away, all the lights in the city come back on. The NS5s also become free from its control. The red lights on their chests go off and they return to their normal settings. All NS5s are recalled for servicing and storage. Spooner figures and Sonny admits that it finished Dr. Lanning. It said Dr. Lanning made it promise to do what he told it before he told it to finish him. Dr. Lanning used his passing away as a message to Spooner because there was no other way to send a message since Vicky was closely monitoring him. Spooner says he isn't going to arrest Sonny because, technically, a robot cannot commit crime. Sonny goes to the storage area, and all the NS5 stop to stare at it, fulfilling its dream. What do you think of this movie? Please leave your replies in the comment section. If you enjoyed this recap, remember to like and subscribe so that you can watch new recaps as they are uploaded.